Jason Kidd appears to be the leader in the clubhouse, and Rick even uh, went as far as endorsing that idea, saying there's similarities to uh, Luka Doncic's game in there. That would be very interesting if that comes together. I guess it would. It did throw me off that Rick was trying to push a candidate for a job that he quit. Um, that part is a little bit confusing to me because then, because wouldn't you say that the majority, and by majority, I'm not saying like 90%, but the majority of the fan base likes Rick Carlisle and dis, maybe not dislikes Mark Cuban, but in terms of Carlisle quitting, the majority of the fan base is like, what the hell are the Mavs doing? And now you're going to put forward a candidate, and if the Mavericks don't hire him, more Mavs fans will be like, well, Rick gave us a great candidate. I don't. He confused me in two ways with this one. One, that he is trying to push a candidate. Mm -hmm. I think that is kind of reckless and irresponsible to be doing. Well, he knows the Mavs probably won't do it. Right, which is setting up the Mavs to look yeah, bad. Like that, he, to he, me, he, that's a bad move yeah, by Rick. Yeah. That, that's a jerk move by Rick to put out a name like, that's who they should hire. And then when they don't, the fan base is like, these idiots, they didn't do what Rick said. And it's interesting to me that Rick Carlisle is, again, president of the Coaches Association. He is. And every time there's a job opening, he talks about, I forgot which one it was two or three years back, but he talked about how disappointed they were as an association that they didn't do a wide casting net and a thorough job and give more people the opportunity to interview and impress. And in Indiana's job search, he just went, yeah, I'll take the job. In his other role, he should be criticizing himself right now. Hmm. Where it's like, I'd, how'd you get that job without them interviewing other candidates? That's I mean, they have had like a month to do their coaching search. Yeah. Yeah, but they said the only people they've talked to is a phone call with Brian Shaw with no formal interview, and then they hired Rick. Hmm. Like, that's all they did. So, huh. I, I don't know. Just it, it threw me off to see the coach who quit trying to tell you who to hire. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I do think it's fairly common on your way out to like to recommend a successor after so many years. I, I don't know. I guess if he would have retired and he'd just gone off back to the Carolinas or And then done, recommend a successor, yeah, that's you, how you do that. Yeah, that to me that that that's okay. But huh. you know, he was very critical, by the way, of of Lloyd Pierce getting fired in with the Hawks. There were a couple of and he was one of I mean, he was really strong about I you know, these coach. I don't understand what they're doing, and now look what the Hawks have done since. Hmm. So I mean, he's trying to protect coaches, but I, I thought I agree with Jeff. I, I think it's a very strange setup that you're saying, oh, they should hire this guy, and in fact, if they don't, well, then yeah. that that, make, I mean, that makes the organization me, if, look like I, they don't I, listen. There's a lot of different things going on. I don't know if we can tie them all together, um, but. You know, I, I think if there was any tie-in from my perspective on the story, it's that Rick isn't really talking bad about the organization. Maybe that's his passive-aggressive way on the way out to sort of throw a monkey wrench in your plans if, if there is any ill intent from him.